So I'm going to share a video, and I want you to listen to this video. And this is an area we need to intercede and pray about. I know already we have. I, I really believe it. I know we already have been praying and interceding and standing in the gap between here and Shamaim and binding and loosing and taking authority. I know many of us have been praying and interceding. So when we get enlightened, if the Father don't reveal things by the Rakadosh, by an inner witness, dream, vision, revelation, all right, so as we intercede in sense, you know, this is the, the traditional feast of Hanukkah. If you ever study my two videos, I got one video uh, explaining, is Hanukkah okay to celebrate? Well, it's, a, it's an added tradition. It's okay to celebrate a feast of dedication, initiation, preparation, uh, for the appointment of someone for a checkup from the neck up or an inner witness checkup or an opportunity to be quickened by the Ruach to reveal the next walking orders for the next following year. Um, in those videos I have, I share you what's true and what's not true, what's tradition added on in what's good tradition, since we know that Hunuk or Enoch is a part of the word Hanukkah, because his name is Hanuk, uh, mean initiated, initiating, dedicated person, okay? And many of us have gone through initiations. I've had pr prayed for people before that have backslid or failed in many ways, and they wanted to make a comeback. And I always stand in the gap in prayer between here and Shamaim and ask Father to forgive them and to allow them to be reinitiated or retrusted. And this is found in several epistles in the small letters where you can hear in the story, the in the few verses or the beginning opening chapters of Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, and on and on, that there's certain people that were once reliable, countable, responsible, uh, they, and some that fell away and come back. And then the, 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 the Shiliak, the Shilikim, the emissaries, the disciples would tell others in the letter, I know he, this person wasn't very good in the beginning, but he's been with me, he's been trained, he's disciplined, and he's ready to be launched. So even in the scriptures shows how some fall out of favor, and then because they in the beginning, through harsh trials and tribulations, and temptations, and then they make a comeback. And when they made a comeback, they got they sat under the feet of a shilakim or a shilak, which is the correct words of a super superintendent, better than the word Catholic word apostolic or apostle. Okay, shilak or shilakim. So those are the words of a superintendent leadership that's under the anointing of the 12 or 13 that have seen the Mashiach and have that mantle upon them because they ate, touched, tasted, lived, breathed, heard the Mashiach. Shaul was born out of late, it says, he said out of his own mouth, because Yahushua came to visit him, and according to scriptures, visited him for about two years when he was away from Jerusalem in Asia, and he got revelation and fresh knowledge, which corrected the other emissaries, the other Shilakim, and we use the word in better than uh, apostolic or apostle because that is a Catholic word with a secret society codex involved. But the correct word is shelech or shelechi, plural. So, and it's, you could see in the writing, he would say and write in the letters, both Shaul and Kepha, 
about people that kind of fell out but came back and they were trained under the feet of uh, someone that's more elder, discipled, and trained and nourished them back from falling from favor into back into favor. Is everybody with me, what I'm sharing? Yes. Okay. So, in these last yamins, days, as we come closer and closer, and we're clipping off and shredding all the little, how should I say, all the little junk, okay? And we're praying and seeking the Father, and we're seeing things, you know, people that are coming in and watching this video or by recording, watching this video by recording of this live Zoom stream, that the closer we get to a wall, the more you can see the blemishes. The closer we get in prayer to Yahuwah, the more we see the blemishes in ourselves. And we need to cleanse ourselves and prepare ourselves, uh, asking the Father for more fresh revelation, to hear his voice, to inquire of what's going on in the playing field. How many of you know that we had to renew our minds, we had to wash our minds with Torah and the Tanakh, and renew it completely from all the Christian doctrines and belief systems. We believed before, 15 years ago one way, 12 years ago another way, 10 years ago another way, 8 years another way. Most of us have been in the family of Yahushua within the 10, 12 years. But if we go back 20 years, 25 years in Christianity and or Messianic and all the different mixtures of the anti-Mashiach, who it is, the mark of the beast, what it is, 666. Now we know that, you know, and I have a video on it, that 666 was never in the scriptures in the beginning. You know, in the original Greek, it was added in the modern Greek translations. And then the older translations, it was 666. And then in the ancient original, it was actually where we get the, the stigma and the styros and the word, which is actually Jesus, that the word Jesus is a mark of the beast. So there's things we've learned, and it's hard for somebody in Christianity. What? What do you say? That the name Jesus is a Catholic mark of the beast? Yes, it is. Okay? It's a false anti-Messiah. It's a, it's a false Messiah. Right? Even the word Christ is a false word for anointing. Christos with a C-H-R-I-S-T-I. -I. I'm sorry I didn't have the preparation of pictures because I'm flowing in the Ruach right now and I didn't prepare it, okay? A little ahead of time. So um, with K-H, it's Greek. With C-H is, is Latin. Just remember all the time. I know some of you know that already because you know my teachings. When you see... Uh, Kaiser Hospital with a K-H. That's really Caesar in Greek, okay? And it went, oh, take me to the Kaiser Hospital. And one of the main Kaiser Hospital in Beverly Hills is supported by Jewish people. And I, I believe that most of them don't even know. It means Kaiser, the Caesar in Greek, with a C, with a C okay? So that's just the rule of language. If it's K-H, it's Greek, or K, it's Greek. If it's C-H, it's Latin. So Christos in, uh, with K-H is Krikos, but with C-H, it's Latin. Now, so the word Christ is a word, pagan word describing the anointing with oil, Grain, wine, all unkosher, 
or pig to anoint an idol of a Greek pagan deity. It has nothing to do with Mashiach, the true anointing of a true Shalakim or Shiliak or a Nabi of Yahuwah or the Nabi in Emet, the prophets, they would say. So the Greek word for Messiah or the correction, if they were to did equal real translation, transliteration, it would have been, the, the proper word would have been Messiah, which is found in John chapter 1, chapter 4, chapter 2. There's a couple of verses there where Messiah and Christos are in the same verse. You can check the Greek and see, and it would say the proper word for the anointed one is Messiah. So the Greeks had a word. Why did they not use it? Why did they change it? In ancient Greek, in Greek translations, it's Messiah. So it was the Catholic Church that changed it to Christi or Christos because of the pagan deities. So it's a, it's a Greek anointing different than the Messiah, Mashiach, Messiah anointing with different type of oils. The five different oils in, in Waikra of Leviticus, of the Kuani, Levitical, or Zadok, Zadokai, Kuani priesthood, had different formulas. The Greeks and the Latin community, and even in Mesopotamia or Babylon and other religious systems that the Yehudi went into and learned Eastern Aramaic. Now they write block writing in Western Aramaic, but even in Babylonian religion, they had a form of anointing oil. It was not the same formula. The formula found in the Zadokite were the main ones in their priesthood, if I use that Latin word, to know the formulas and the smell and the scent. If somebody walked in the door with a mashak anointing, first stage anointing, mikvah water, first step anointing, starting ministry, the smell would be different. A nabi anointed oil, the smell would be different. A levy anointed oil will be smell different. The zadok, zadokite of the kodal, the, the high level zodokite, like Zechariah, the father of, or even Yochanan, of the 24 courses of the Koine, his oil on him smelt different than the other levels of Koine in their different priesthood, or just a simple levy. There's levies that were just embroiders. Uh, the women were levy women of his daughters Leon, that just did certain cleanup or made the wax or made oils or certain things. But only certain ones wore that scent that when they walked in the room, you knew the level of their anointing because the only ones that had the formula and had access was in the house of Yahuwah or among the priesthood or the Zadok Kohani of the Kadol, the big ones called big priesthood, okay? High level ones. So, so it's a different oil. It's a different anointing. Same thing in Hinduism, Buddhism. They have initiation. They have initiation and training for people to be dedicated for their religious belief system. Witchcraft have a form of anointing and different levels of initiation to get to a, to launch their warlocks and witches okay depending how many demons they have and they could control without being possessed themselves so the word christ is a fake word of a greek pagan deity anointing the anointing of zeus jesus or the eusus 
the one that they launched the word Jesu, and eventually Jesus, which is three to 500 years old. So, and in Spanish, they, they say, Jesus, Jesus, they still got Zeus in it. Okay. Even though we can recognize Hanukkah as a it's okay dedication, is the nine candlestick menorah scriptural? No. I teach that in my videos, show you the difference from the original seven and then the added nine. Most stores is hard to find the original scriptural menorahs. You go to markets and stores and Jewish community and you'll see all the nine. But where's the original seven? So it's like a tradition of man is dominating only uh, over scriptural men menorahs, okay? Like you see in my chest here with the name of Yahuwah. They're hiding the name. They have the traditions of men, which is making void and null the true traditions of the Torah of Moshe from the doctrines of men. Now, in all these religions, including rabbinical Talmud and Kabbalistic, and, and they all have commentary add-on to the scripture. The only books we have is not really commentary. We look at that if we want to, but it's really the focus of dictionaries, uh, concordance, Greek, Hebrew dictionaries, references of the different expressions in Hebrew, so we can get the depth of it to make our own meditation of the, allowing the Rakadosh to give us proper interpretation of what we're reading in Hebrew or in English that has a Greek uh, roots, okay? So, in this increase of evil, we need an increase of the anointing of the Rakadosh. In this increase of time of spiritual warfare, we need to be initiated and increased in another level. I always said, another level, there's another devil. So don't get so simca when you beat one up or you conquer one and it becomes easy step on the road. No, there'll be another level. There'll be another devil. And we notice in this end times, as we intercede and we pray and we ask the Father to reveal to us what is the mark? What is the anti-Mashiach? Well, we know the word anti or anti in Latin is someone against, but in the Greek, it's not only someone and against, but it's someone as a or a false Mashiach. Okay? And of course, if they say Christ, it really means false anointing because Christos represents a, a, an anointing of pagan deities. You know, you drive into communities and with freeways, you rarely see it, super highways. Mm -hmm. When you go through roads, what they call market roads or highways, freeways that have a side road and you exit one city to go into another and you take the long road, Route 66 or, you know, the long roads, not the interstate, you know, red, white, and blue uh, metal interstate uh, banners of highways, super highways. And once in a while, you'll see it on the super highways, but mostly it's off-road. You'll see you're now leaving so-and-so city. And the next one will say you're now coming into the state of Arizona, New Mexico, whatever. And then as you're now in the town of so-and-so, and then you'll see a sign with all the Mason symbols of the secret societies. And they'll have little banners on the marquee or big billboards, sometimes half the size of a billboard, sometimes full size, or of the Masons that dedicated the cornerstone to those places. Frisco is very obvious. They have uh, three obelixes, very super large obelixes to the scale of the one in Washington's monument. Which happens to be 666, you know, 
when they measure down into the foundation and up to the capstone, which is aluminum capstone. Um, but so it's a 666. And the image of jealousy in the book of Daniel is an image. It doesn't say an idol or deity. Because everywhere in the word when you says, and they been re a resurrected an image and an idol and they worshiped it and blah blah. In English it doesn't give you the details, but if you if you if you fully go into the Hebrew, you can see it's Moloch, the star of Moloch, Dagon, or the horned goat occult witchcraft of uh, it would say so it's kind of interesting when you're reading and you see them erect a certain idol or a certain people of a certain country they erect a certain idol and you look up under the word idol what the name of that demon is or principality okay it's hidden in english of the simplicity of the word idol or false if i were to use the word false gods keep in mind for everybody here that's listening to me by the sound of my voice by recording or live we must when we minister to our fellow christian friends in the christian community or in the messianic community or even the rabbinical they don't use the right words they're using pagan words okay they still use G-O-D, the L-O-R-D, and, and the goddess of grace, the goddess of mercy. And you see, they use all those pagan deities, okay? Now, because they adapted it from Rome, the Roman calendar, etc., etc. Whenever you hear somebody verbally say, and you're trying to minister to them, well, those are false gods. Because it says it right here. Where? You could go throughout any King James modern translation Bible, and you will not find the word, two words, false gods. They'll put a little G-O-D, S, and that's supposed to be in the dictionaries of Christianity in the front of their, uh, of, of their front of their books when they put information and they say the little G-O-D means a false god. So in your brain, you have got an image that that means false God, but you cannot find it nowhere. That in the reason why in the scriptures it doesn't say false gods, it just says other gods, meaning other mighty ones, other principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, other spirits, other, not false other okay because they if they have a they're a principality they have spirits that little demon imps all around them as little torpedoes or little fiery dart arrows i share with there's there was a guy on the internet wasn't a christian he was a doctor he might have been but he didn't expose himself as a christian or his religious belief system okay he said that the fear of this, or I say Corona and Lyme, 19 time, Corona and Lyme, 19 time, okay, 19th time or times. So, because we all know it started in, in the 70s, we all have had some form of the strands of flus, virus, respiratory coronaviruses. Every one of us, it's like a cold and a flu come and change and your immune system builds up and changes every year. Okay. This one's just a little hormone injected, fuel injected, man-made injected, forced it uh, a little different. Okay. To really harm the weak and vulnerable. This doctor said, he said, the biggest problem we have is that the spirit, he didn't say spirit, is fear. We know as medical science that when a fear comes on a body, their immune system in the pores of their body and the chemistry of their body goes into an open system that can get sick easy. Hello? This is what a medical doctor says. 
So if you have a spirit of fear, you're more open to infirmities. Some people are bound by medications and pharmaceutica, and they're, they're bound. I, my doctor said this. My doctor said that. I said, well, what about your doctor, Jesus? I'm talking to a Christian. Well, well, well you know, and I, and I told one friend not too long ago, and I, I, I really didn't want to tell him the truth, but he was a faith fan, you know. He was in the faith movement that many of us have experienced. Even though we have emona, emuna, because we study to show ourselves approved, workmen rightly dividing the word truth, that's true emona, because you study and build that scar of knowledge, branded, printed in our DNA. So we know that we know that we know that we know. And before we know that we know that we know 10 years ago is different than 20 years ago and 30 years ago and even the last 10 years, five years, six years, one year, because you're learning a different level. Your emona was stretched to believe in that area. When people believe, pick up the word and get receive salvation, initiate it in the baby born again. And they're saved by unmerited favor of the compassion and the fit pity of Yahuwah. He has to go to the next level. It's not, we're not saved by grace, it's unmerited favor. Unmerited favor is the first level of coming and getting forgiven to the blood that was placed on the doorpost. Then you got to go through the feast. Eventually, you're going to get to atonement. And that's where atonement happens, the full atonement. And you have it's a cycle. It's the cycle of like you mark a wheel and it makes a full circle. The full circle is a year, 364 yamins. And you walk through the feast one year. You make the cycle the second year, the third year. Fourth year, in each cycle that you make in the feast, each feast becomes more alive, more intimate. You get more obtained, more understanding. Oh, we had the wrong date. We got a better calendar. Let's try it this way. The portholes, the gates to the Shamaim on that day of atonement, Yom of atonement, is open to us. But it starts off with unmerited favor. Saved not by grace, which is only mentioned once in Ephesians. They add the second one as brackets, meaning it was added more, right? But it's unmerited favor in Hebrew. Grace is a goddess. We're not saved by a goddess. We're saved by unmerited favor. To get close to Abba, son, to receive the forgiveness of sins through his blood. And then from there, we, we said we're going to keep the Torah we're going to keep the feast. We're going to keep the Shabbat. And eventually you're going to keep the Torah. And when you keep Yom HaTorah, the Shofar, you go, the Shout, and then Yom HaKippurim, the, the Yom of Atonement, now atoning comes in and that activation of the blood is activated in atonement and the cycles start to continue, to continue, continue every year. And we grow and mature continue to grow and mature to it. And, and it becomes more high. You know, when, even when I, we used to have a Christian community, the, the Messianic community, congregation, buildings, I used to always tell people when they came to the altar and asked forgiveness of their sins, I would never pat them on the back and say they were Christians. I mean, never. They said, now you're born anew. Now you got to grow up. You need milk of the word. You got to mature. You got to read the word. Now we tell them, you not only got to study to show yourself approved and read the word, but that you got to walk out the Shabbat and the feast. Of course, in Hanukkah, they have an addition. 
It's not a bad tradition to follow. It's okay. But we don't, I don't agree what happened with the Maccabees. Because they, instead of them going back to Qumran or the seven locations of the Zadok Kohani Kahun, the Kahun, instead of going to them and bringing them back and said, We cleanse the temple, now you got to come in and re cleanse the house, the Bayi, and we're going to let you be the priest again be the Zadok Kohani. Instead of doing that, they kept the Jewish, Judea, false levy priesthood. And there was not one time that there was a war. It was That was, I think, the sixth or ninth revolt. I can't remember how many it was, but I have some videos of ex exact how many revolts there was till finally they killed the Greeks. And of course it lasted 70 something years with a little Persian uh, Yehudim uh, control, uh, Ma uh, monarch sovereign. And then, and then the Romans came in to reoccupy. So there was a Greek assimilation occupation and then there was a 70 something year break and then a Roman. So this is the Maccabees of the, of the Greek assimilation when they were forcing the UADs to eat pork and worship Zeus for a temple of Jesus in the house of Yahuwah. So there were several battles until they won. A lot of them got beat up and killed and got put more in subjection. And then there was the cleaning up. And then we have Hanukkah. Now they know now that, and I put videos on it, Recently, they found in the last five years in a location in the foundation of Ba'i Kodel, the house of Yahuwah, that they found a jar. When they broke the seal in, in a very sterile environment, environment they found they were, that they were going to find oil. But what they found was, a, was this white, clear gel with strong fumes and now they did some backward engineering and they know how to make it how many of you have ever had um before super glue we used to use like and all oh, there's elmers for wood and some plastics but mostly wood and paper elmers starchy glue but you know we used to put models together model cars army planes and boats. And I used to use a super, before super glue, I used to use a glue that was high flammable. It was like a gel. And that gel, you could put it dot. And when you light it, the fumes burn until, and the, fume, it, the fire sucks the fumes, but doesn't touch the gel. Stays at a distance until it, and the gel will shrink and shrink after a while because it's, it's supporting the fumes and the fire is only burning the fume, not the gel. And it turned out that was what they used to put in the menorah. And the menorah in the house of Yahuwah is a seven candlestick, not nine. Their tradition was that they lit the menorah, the seven. And it stayed lit for nine days it took to clean the house. So they've invented this nine-day menorah. But in realistic, they thought it was a miracle that the menorah oil stayed there for over nine days yes. to complete the cleaning. The lamp and the light of Torah in the seven-pointed candlesticks right, of the menorah. The real menorah. But they realize now that that story is from the year 2 300 and officially written in 400 from oral. And it was added to uh, and created this new tradition of a Hanukkah, neglecting to tell the people that Hanuk name, Enoch, initiated. 
checkup of the neck up once a year. Reset yourself to be rededicated for the following next year. A cleaning up of this house. Because Hanuk was dedicated by Abba and spiritually clean eternally. So the word Hanukkah, Hanuk, and Enoch is throughout the scriptures. It's not found literally only in the book of Lucas, where it says that Yahushua went to the high place of Jerusalem for the Feast of Dedication. And you look it up in Greek, and it goes to the ancient Hebrew word Hanukkah or Hanuk. So even the Jews use the, the Brit Gadasha of Luke to say, see, during the time of the J-man, uh, he went to the temple in the time of Hanukkah, but you, you don't see it because it's hidden in the word dedicate. So in my video, you can go back and check it out if you haven't, where I break down the word dedicate, dedicating, dedication, and uh, initiate, which has found the word Hanuk or Enoch. So it's okay, but they're traditional add-ons, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, and then now we have in the year 2020, a, a whole tradition that's morphed and added more by the sages and the writers of rabbinical Talmud. And of course, House of Israel, which they call them Samaritans, they don't practice the, the added pagan or added days of rabbinical Talmud tradition holidays because it was never in their book. But even though the word dedicate or anuk is in the book. So when you're reading the, your Christian Bibles or your new Bibles or scriptures or Messianic or ISR or Hallelujah, and you see the word dedicate or dedicating or dedication, it is the words for anuk, hanukkah, or dedication, initiation, preparation for initiation, a reset of cleaning a place. You know, when we move into a house, we clean it and pray before we move our furniture in, apartments also. When my wife and I, we go to a hotel traveling, before we take our stuff in there, we go into the hotel with oil and we clean it spiritually we open the door, the window, cast spirits out, perversion, homosexuality, uh, any sexual acts, drugs, anything that was done in that room uh, or that TV or the bathroom through the people that stayed there previously in a matter of hours before us. So we do a spiritual cleaning and we ask the Ruach presence to come in the hotel room and then we bring in our luggage that nothing will hitchhike even in our luggage, or us there. So we, we ask our, 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 our malak kim, our messengers assigned to us to protect our belongings and us, that nothing would hitchhike as we leave it in a day or two or three, whatever, that hotel or room we're staying in, in Airbnb or whatever, okay? So... And in Hebrew tradition, they do that, but they use different intagnations of rabbinical Talmud or Kabbal Kabbal Kabbalistic. But we do a natural prayer with scriptures flowing in the Ruach Gadosh. Okay, so now, so the feast of dedication is good, but it was not good in the end. They put they didn't go back to the area of the, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were, where the Qumran was, modern words, new words, and it re-brought back in the Zadokai priest to rededicate them to take care of the house. Instead, they <laughs> resurrected their Jude part Levi Jewish Pharisees, which eventually became Pharisees, Sadducees, and initiated them to run the priesthood. So to me, it's not very good. If Metith Yahu Maccabee and his other sons said, stop 
what we're going to do, we're not real koine. We're second, third level, Levi Judah. So we're going to go and we're going to summon back the Zadok and their scrolls and their calendar and their information of their writings back into the house so they can t run the show because it was the Zadokites are the ones that watch as watchers of the calendar, uh, two or three witnesses everywhere be established. And then they brought it to the other levels of Levi and even the Levi Judah people as well. Yehuda, or the house of Yehudi. How many of you know Meriam had to be Levi? Think about it. When you read your scriptures very carefully, or Yosef took in and was told in a dream by a messenger to accept her as his wife and keep the engagement. Somewhere down the line, when they were children, because Miriam was the cousin of Elizabeth. Elizabeth, according to Luke, was the daughter of Aaron, of the Zodakai priesthood. Right? According to the word, it says that. So what is she? She's only Judah through marriage of Yosef. You got that? Yes. That's it? Yes. She was the son, cousin, so that means she's bloodline, a priestly bloodline. So her seed of Yahushua was priest. Yes. He is under the order of Melchizedek yes. and the priesthood. I know Yanel knows this because she studied it intensively, right? So Yahushua did not have no DNA of Yosef, which I believe Yosef had a ruach of the Yosef that led Egypt because Yosef of Misarim, the father spoke to them through dreams and interpretations. And he had, his name was Yosef, and his same gift was what? Dreams and interpretations. Okay? Instead of the messenger visiting him firsthand, he would go in a dream with him. And then he would interpret it, say, we need to flee to Egypt, Mesarim, for a while because of this Herod, Herodim. And, uh, and then we'll come back later. Right or the or the senses, they you know the messenger told him where to go, so you know Ushua was of the seed of his Abba through the Ruach and he is a of Maryam of the Levitical Koani, the Zadok, because Elizabeth and Zachariah, it says specifically they're Zadokite. So some of the Zodokites stayed behind. They didn't flee or get kicked out completely. Okay? None of those, none of those Pharisees and Sadducees of Levitical Jews could go into the Kodesh place because they're not of the courses. So, but they could come to the meetings of the Grand Hall of the Sanhedrin of the 70 Rebbe or Rabbinical, meaning great, great ones, okay? And of course, some of the Sanhedrin, Zodokai, believe in Yahushua because of Zacharias and Yochanan, okay? So I don't agree. I agree with the Feast of Dedication, but I disagree because they did not, they failed to bring the Zodokai priest back into the camp from their distance, diaspora, uh, which was they were chased out by a Persian emperor, right? And the Greek ro soldiers, they were escorted out. They feared to kill them. They scared to kill them. But they told them, take your scrolls. This is historically, I don't have nothing to put on the screen right now because I'm flowing the Ruach. I didn't prepare it, okay? This is historical facts. What happened historically, they... They, they made a deal with the Zodok priest. If they changed their calendar, changed the Shabbat, changed the feast dates, accepted the Greek and Roman calendar, blah, 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 they could stay priest 
and stop preaching the other books. Well, they said, no, we can't do that. But instead of killing them like they killed other Yehudi, they said, then gather all your children, all your belongings, all your other books, and get out of Jerusalem. And they settled in where the Qumran caves end up being. But it was just a settlement there, which when I visited, those buildings were two or three stories high. There were scribes, there were powerful elders, and they were training people how to read and write the other scrolls and all the scrolls and keep the scribe of the lying tongue of the rabbinical Pharisees and Sadducees from deceiving the people. And they made a decree that anybody found with after, you know, a uh, hundred years, 150 years, anybody found with any of the Zadokwani scrolls would, would be taken to the center place they'll be stoned the scroll will be burnt on them they'll be stoned and burnt and their family and children so because of this memorandum <laughs> added law they ended up putting fear among all the Yehudim in Jerusalem among Levitical and Jewish and Benjamite and Manasseh all of them and they Oh, we can't say the name. Oh, we can't read other documents. So the first, the very first canon was not the Catholic Church. It was not the Orthodox Catholic Church. It was not the Greek, Roman, Russian Orthodox. It was not the Roman Catholic in the year 5600. It was the Yudim. They created the first canonization of what books you could read and can't read. Because it was not ever a book, it was a scroll. And they're broken up in different writings. Okay, So it's all history, history facts. So do we celebrate? Yeah, if you want to celebrate fast, celebrate, rededicate, and reinitiate. So I will get people that are making teshuva and repenting and become from backsliding or they're coming into the new knowledge of Yahuwah and Yahushua and the Torah, Torah, the feast, the commandments and the understanding. Okay. So, and they've fallen out of favor a few times and they're making a rededication. And there's several ways I intercede for them. I ask forgiveness with them. I put oil on them, ask the Father to forgive them for their backslidings that are many, and I ask you to give them a new chance, a new, a new trial, a new appointment, a visitation to be rededicated, reinitiated, so they can be hanuk, dedicated, initiated approved, sealed, stamped, okay? Mikvah is just, those are physical stages of it, okay? That's why Yoshua did the mikvah tevilah, the mercy. So I intercede for people, asking Father to even re, to, to reassign his messenger to him because he backslid so horribly and sinned his messenger could not look and be around him, but stepped aside. So I pray, Father, rededicate your his messenger. Envelope him, clean him as he goes through the cycle. Cycle is 364 yamins of a year. Walking out the feast of Shabbat and the seven feasts that we know of in Torah. Of the seven lampstands of the candlesticks, walking out, rededicated. And then every year, I still get people that call me, hey, Eliyahu, I'm on my second year, brother. Praise Yah. Another one said, I'm in my fifth year walking the feast and like what you taught me, and I haven't backslid in since. Okay. Celebrate. You know, he conquered that other level for that other devil. Okay. So we intercede for people to be rededicated, initiated, and rekindled. We stand in the gap. 
Sam Whale had to constantly stand in the gap for the sovereign soul. <laughs> Remember that? Those stories. He always did. Even David, you know, he had to stand in the gap. Nathan the Hanabi had to stand in the gap. The seer for David. Okay. So they intercede, rededicate, reinitiate. It says that David fasted in some of the Psalms of Telegim. He said that his skin stuck to his bone. Take not the Ruach Kadosh from me, but rekindle me. In other words, after the sin of murdering the husband of another woman and taking her as his wife and impregnating her, he went into a fast. I, I know what he'd fasted. He said, Abba, I'm fasting to the Ruach, come back or I die. Or I die. Refire me up or I die. I'm not going to play the part. I'm not going to play the goosebump part. I'm not going to play the game. I'm not going to pretend, right? Because in Christianity, I remember one time a certain televangelist would always like to call me up with him and put my hand on his shoulder while he was flowing in the anointing. About the fourth time it happened, I questioned the father. Father, I look at this man with a greater anointing. Why is he calling me? I know I have an anointing. He calls me and another man to be on either side of his shoulder. The father says, he's hitchhiking, piggybacking on your anointing because his anointing is not fired up. No. So he was hitchhiking, piggybacking on the student's anointing. Benny Hinn always used that tape, which I shared with some of you, you knew about it, that little cassette tape they duplicated of that a visitation of messengers singing the full song of hallelujah. And they play in the background while people are singing hallelujah, which has a blend of those, of those, those Malak singing with that song and voices of people. And you sing the song, hallelujah, you're singing praises to Yah. Hallelujah. You're singing to Yah. So the anointing comes in. He occupies the presence of his people. Yah will occupy the praises of them that sing hallelujah. And he knew that, even though he wasn't right. Living right. Okay. So the Father showed me that's the reason he was hitchhiking off our anointing the students, the disciples, because he wasn't right. They're living in this mammon of televangelism. Okay? So now, so the Father showed me this, that his anointing of his Ruach, as we pray for the next level, I use this time of Hanukkah, Saying, Father, rededicate me, re reinitiate, fire us up, give us another level for the level from last year is not equivalent and ready. The weapons of yesterday are not for tomorrow. The weapons of next month, the weapons of next year are have to surpass the weapons of warfare of last year, last month, two years ago, five years ago. The anointing of those supernatural weapons have to advance greater. Yes, yes. To fight off the strongholds of what we're seeing of the demonic powers among our elections, among the infiltration of, of demonic powers, of human sacrifice, child traffic, everything else going on in order to spill the blood and bring more demons back. Because we're binding them and locking them up. And as fast as we're putting them in the pit, they're bringing them back out through portholes and gateways. And so we say, Father, what do we do? We're overwhelming. As they, they also said, there's more on our side. There's them than us. And he said, no, there's more on our side. Open his eyes that he may see. There's more messengers. There's more on our side. Amen. Yes. And of course, there was over 900. And there was little bits here and there hiding in caves. There were Nabi besides Eliyahu and Elisha or Elisha. So we have a remnant of us scattered. 
They're all scattered. And the Father's gathering us. We're interceding. We're praying. Say, Father, what do we pray next? How do we pray? I don't know not what to pray about. But your Ruach Kadosh shows us as we make utterances and we get the word from the Ruach Kadosh and we speak it in his languages from Shamaim towards those countries and we speak and call those things not as though they are to break these strongholds. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. I, uh, I always, I made a video about a theory is not a fact, but a guess. So when a doctor says, what's your symptoms? That means guess. What's your guess? Let me write it down. Every word spoken against us, every word written against us, even on that tablet, on that little, little clipboard on the side of a bed of a hospital. As we intercede and tear down these strongholds and ask them for other understanding, revelation. To penetrate. Even when I hear my, you know, I, I was very, very excited to see in Arizona when Giuliani and others were there sharing after they did their general meeting of exposing the dumb and dumber machines, the demon dumb and eyes machines, that they had a celebration. And I heard in the background so far. I got word of emails, you know, because I asked the father, should I go to those meetings? Because they're not speaking your name. They're speaking the idol names, the begging words. Should I go to the meetings and speak in the word, your true name? Because these people are illiterate to the real name. They're speaking pagan words. Just like all of us, we were doing it too. Been there, done that. So we're not pushing people down. We just want to be there to lift them up. The father says, no, I have people there. So I got a word from a friend, text, that there was messianic people there blowing shavars, speaking the name of the father, calling things out as they, uh, as they are, that are not, and declaring and proclaiming. And even in Washington, when they did the march, the Jericho march, yes. there was Hebraic people there, House of Israel people there. So even though we didn't, couldn't go, father had others there blowing the shofar, declaring the true name of the Father, the Son. Of course, the Christians dominated in the political realm, dominated, kind of hit it, but you heard it, heard it in the background. Yes. The shofar is blowing. You're hearing the people talking. This is a spiritual fight against light, against darkness. Yes. So, yeah, there's a little bit of revival of Christianity. Of course, I was told years ago there'll be a revival of, of the J-Man before there's a revival of the true name of Yahushua. The Father said, just agree with them to tear down those strongholds because there's principalities and powers of a star on each state. And each star has five points of Moloch, of the points of magic of Moloch, 50 on the flag representing 50 princes, principalities, happens to be five points of the pentagram. Okay. And the Philippine president and his flag has 32 points of magic. Okay. <clears throat> on his flag. So, and I have a video on that. You know, the stars and points of magic. It's an old video, you know, but you can check it out. Still good. Recycle it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to show you a little video. I'm going to show you a little clip, a few minutes. I'm going to see if I can get it to work so we can reboot ourselves. Because I've always told people, even in that video about symptoms is not a fact, but a guess. And I explained in that video that and when we get a symptom, which means a guess, and I've gone to the doctors. I've done this. They said, what's your symptoms, Mr. Charles? Well, what's your symptoms for me to do this test? I just want you to do the test. Does your father have this? Does your grandfather? No, nobody. My mom's side or my dad's. I don't give them evidence to write anything down against me. They call it hereditary, okay? Because the curse that my father beat and my mother beat, it's different than the curse I ask forgiveness for and got sins forgiven and cleansed and 
They take a saliva, they take a blood, they take a urine, and then they do their tests. And they come back to you with the information. But if you add more information there, that's more information they can add for the theoretical guesses of practicing their medicine. Practice. I don't let people practice on me. You know, I want, I want somebody to push a bone if it's sticking out of my leg. I don't want nobody practicing that. I want somebody who got about 10 times compound fractures under their belt before they push my bone back in my leg and shove my leg back and sew it up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want nobody practicing. I want experience, right? Somebody taking a knife out of me or bullet out of me or whatever. I don't know. It's your first time. Give me somebody who, who's got 20 in their, their belt. Bring them that doctor. You know, I want no practicing practitioner. Okay. Because everybody that comes into my house, if they show any sneeze or cold, and I say, what do you feel? I say, well, I kind of feel of a, a kind of a sense of a cold coming on. I say, well, that's a symptom, not a fact. The fact is that according to Torah, you're healed by the stripes of the 90 for Psalms. You're covered with a protection surrounding you. According to the blood covenant of Mashiach, by his stripes, you're healed. But I'm going to give you something natural, and I'll whip it out. And I'll give them, a, and then a couple hours, another one. And then we start talking. I said, what do you feel now? And he says, wow, the symptoms are gone. That's right. Because this stuff, malaria, HIV, AIDS, on and on and on. People have been cured. Some takes weeks and months, but some, when it comes to a flu or a common cold, bacteria, virus, Within hours it goes like that, depending on how sick you were. It's not downloaded in your bloodstream very well. It goes away right away because it's a symptom. Symptom is not a fact. When you're in a symptom stage, when you're in a symptom stage and you tell the doctor to give you blood tests, urine tests, saliva, whatever, they'll show nothing there. Because it takes the mouth to confess it. The confession of your mouth. So they put a swab, a little swab A on you. You have these checkpoints of your fear, your tense. Have I caught it before? Have I had it? Am I a carrier? Oh, you got all this fear factor spirits to diluting your immunity of strength and the chemistry of your reaction of, of your body. And then, and then you get in line and you're in car, your car and these guys with masks and gears come to your car and they stick a swab in your nose. <laughs> now I got to pull my car up to the section where you got to wait to see if the test in two minutes, five minutes, or whatever, depending on the line, if I'm tested positive, tested negative, or a carrier. And you're waiting, and you're tense, and your fear factor is in your bloodstream, and you don't have no Torah, you have no knife for Psalms, you have no nothing to protect you, no name mark of the Yahuwah on your forehead, nothing. Well, sorry. You and your wife are tested positive. You got to be under quarantine for 14 days. I'm going to take your license and number. Make sure you go home. And here you got to call. And here's the phone number. And, and you're now marked as, as there's 682 today that have received Corona and Lyme 19 times. But the fear is the greatest one. The spirit of terror of the unknown. We don't have that because we know that we know that we know that we know. <laughs> and if we did get sick and had to go to the hospital, it's for us to witness to somebody else in a hospital room. You know, the Father has all things to work together for good, you know, in operation. That's why we call it all Simka, Kara, celebration, instead of the word joy. We call it all Simka when we go through divers' temptations and trials and tribulations.